Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start at the very least on my review of the Marlowe Murder Club by Robert Thorogood. So, Robert Thorogood is the guy who created Death in Paradise. Uh, there are some novels of that. This is the first in this. I don't know if it's a series or a standalone. Um, but he lives in Marlowe. I used to work in Marlowe, and this book's obviously set in Marlowe, so it was really cool to see a lot of the places that I know and I'm, that I'm familiar with in fiction. I'd also seen him um, record a podcast at Wickham Arts Centre where I work, so that was cool as well. But I am going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... To solve an impossible murder, you need an impossible hero. 77-year-old Judith Potts is blissfully happy. She lives alone in a faded mansion in Marlow, sets crosswords for the times, and there's no man in her life to tell her what to do or how much whiskey to drink. One evening, while out swimming in the Thames, Judith witnesses a brutal murder. When the local police don't believe her story, Judith and two unlikely friends decide to investigate for themselves. Together, they are the Marlow Murder Club. But soon another body turns up, and it seems that a real-life serial killer is at work. Now the puzzle they set out to solve has become a trap from which they might never escape. I will say there's some similarities between this and um, Richard Osman's Thursday Murder Club. The books both came out at about the same time, and you know I don't think either of them stole from each other. It's just something in the zeitgeist, you know. I like in his author bio as well, it says, When he was ten years old, he read his first proper novel, Agatha Christie's Peril at End House, and has been in love with the genre ever since. Good book. And so a lot of what I've tabbed out is because it's places that I know from, you know, my own experience of Marlowe. Um, so I'm going to read, read a few of those out. So here we have, uh, she's gone for a swim. She swam upstream, the evening sunshine flashing diamonds on the water all around. Judith smiled to herself. She always smiled to herself when she was out swimming. She couldn't help it. After all, there might be dog walkers on the Thames path, and there were very definitely plenty of people in the near distance as she looked at the spire of Marlow Church and the span of the Victorian suspension bridge that linked the town to the neighbouring village of Bisham. None of these people were aware that there was a 77-year-old woman swimming nearby entirely in the nude. And Judith, uh, she, she says, the messier her bedroom, the more she felt cocooned and safe. And that reminds me of my girlfriend. Shout out to Shay if she's watching. So we get a reference uh, to the Books Free Press and Henley Regatta. So the Books Free Press is our local newspaper. Henley Regatta is like a boating event. I've actually been to it a few times with work. And Terry Pratchett used to write for the Books Free Press as well. And here's another little description of Marlowe, which was interesting to me as somebody who's, you know, worked there. Judith loved Marlowe with a passion. To her mind, it wasn't too large, it wasn't too small, it was just right. The perfect town for a Goldilocks like her. The high street had an elegant Georgian suspension bridge and ancient, and ancient riverside church at one end, an ornamental obelisk at the other, and in between, there was every type of historical building from centuries of piecemeal development down each side. To tie it all together into an aesthetic whole, red and blue bunting crisscrossed the length of the high street, creating the sort of chocolate box image of an English home county's town that jigsaw puzzles were made of. We get a reference to a character, Elliot Howard, the auction master. Um, there, was an, there was an easeful, almost amused superiority to his manner, and Judith had a sudden insight that Elliot was inordinately proud of having a head full of hair at his age, which is why he kept it so long. I sometimes joke to people that's why I have long hair because most people my age are going bald. So we get this, this is the second murder. The murder had happened in a bungalow on the Wickham Road, a perfectly ordinary street that linked Marlow to High Wickham with suburban houses on both sides and smart hedges and cars on driveways. So I live in High Wickham and that's the road I used to take into Marlow to get to work. We learn about Judith, uh, she buys all of her jigsaw puzzles from the charity shops in Marlow and took them back when she'd completed them, so she'd just been grateful to find a puzzle she'd not done before. Um, and I get a lot of my books, or I used to get a lot of my books from the Marlow charity shop. Still today, every now and then, I'll go there for a day out. Um, and because it's quite a, like an upper class town, you get some really good stuff. Like I used to manage to find occasionally um, Folio Society editions for £2. We get this, Susie says, they're always judging you cats. Yeah. Uh, Judith it takes a fall and she gets told she should get her wrist checked out at the minor injuries unit in High Wickham in the morning. Um, yeah, that's our local hospital. They don't actually have an A&E. The nearest A&E is like an hour away. So if you have a heart attack here, you're kind of screwed. We used to have an A&E in the hospital and then the Conservative government shut it down. So now we're all fucked. All right, so uh, they go to a mosque and we get, Iqbal's mosque was situated on the edge of High Wycombe, surrounded on all sides by terraced houses. It was a 1980s red brick building, but it had a grand white dome and minaret on top. And uh, I used to walk past that when I used to, right at the start of the pandemic, when I used to go for my walks to uh, a shop that was a post office as well. And we get this great line, what the fuck are we doing here? 
Shh, Beck said appalled. You can't swear in here, it's a police station. So yeah, The Marlowe Murder Club by Robert Thorogood. Highly enjoyed this, thoroughly enjoyed it. It was Thorogood. Um, I would definitely recommend if you're a fan of like humorous and quirky cozy mysteries. Uh, yeah, I gave it a 4 out of 5, a strong one. Maybe even a 4.5 out of 5. And uh, it will probably be in my top books of the year. Definitely check it out. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Marlowe Murder Club by Robert Thorogood. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.